the pine cube. Get it? Because it's a, a pine cone. But it's in Minecraft, so, so it's a cube? Oh, oh, you wanted me to talk about the about Pine 64's pine cube. Yeah, no. I do that over here. Just the mere idea of a closed source security camera sounds contradicting. The conflicting concepts forcing me to trust an Azura. It feels so restricting forcing security through obscurity. So let's see what Pine 64 has in store with their Pine Cube camera featuring no back door. We'll start by looking at the specifications, then move on to how to install the camera and finally how to get video streaming up and running. This camera features within its rather small space of 55 by 51 by 51.5 millimeters, a micro SD slot, a all winner so chip ARM Cortex A7 MP Core 800 megahertz CPU, 128 megabytes of DDR3 RAM. The camera is a OV5640 5 megapixels, and I believe has a resolution of 640 by 480. There's an Ethernet port with passive power over Ethernet, 4 to 18 volts, a USB 2.0A host, 26 pins, GPIO, GPIO pins, you can look up the specifications for that yourself, an internal microphone on the front, Wi-Fi, volume and home buttons, power DC in, 5 volt 1A from micro USB port, which is what I use, or you can use the GPIO port, uh, which I haven't tried, uh, and a and 4 to 18 volts from Ethernet Passive PoE, as previously mentioned. And it's pretty light too, weighing in at 55 grams. To get everything set up, we first need to start by downloading an operating system for the device. I went with Arbion as they had a pre-configured image specifically for the Pine Cube. I'll leave a link in the description below. Once downloaded, I flash the image onto an SD card. You'll notice that the base pine cube doesn't have any kind of traditional display out. There are many ways to see what we are doing though. I went with the secure shell approach. I powered on the pine cube with an ethernet connection, jumped onto my PC, opened the terminal and ran the following command to see what IP uh, all of the devices on my network had, all the different IPs. And map dash s capital p and then your uh, local uh, ip and that shows you all of your 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 all the the I then i logged in using the defaults of root for the username 1234 for the password Armbian prompts me to change the defaults and create a user account i personally didn't create a user account but i did change the root password all right now that we are in we can start updating and even connect to Wi-Fi if we wanted to. Let's put the PineCube aside for the moment and set up the RTMP server. I'll be doing this on my desktop. We'll be using Nginx for the streaming and this is actually my first time using Nginx. I found a really good tutorial from servermania.com that I'll link in the description. Uh, they explained very well how to do all the stuff. It's pretty simple. The gist of it is setting up Nginx with the RTMP module, configuring it, naming your RTM app, uh, RTMP app, and uh, getting the ports open and forwarded if you want to use it through the network, and boom, you're done. Now that our server is up and running, let's stream our camera to it. First, we need to install a couple of packages. Media CTL to help us set up our camera, and FFmpeg to stream it, to do video stuff. FFmpeg is awesome. And you can install both these things with the command below. MediaCTL is under the v4l-utils uh, package. And now to actually stream a 640 by 480 50 FPS camera. We're first going to set up the camera with this long command. This will allow us to use it in FFmpeg by just identifying it slash dev slash video zero. 
which is our next command. Streaming it using FFmpeg. FFmpeg. Using this command, making sure that you change that IP for your IP, whether it's public or local. And re make sh this is going to be a path to your RTMP server, uh, whether you're using your local IP or your public IP or heck, even a, a domain name. But make sure you go under your app name and then create a new app name uh, that you can name whatever you want. I've called mine Pinecube. In theory, you should be able to see what the camera is streaming using something like uh, MPV or whatever to, to play that RTMP stream. So let's do that and take the opportunity to look at the quality of the camera too. So this is the quality of the Pinecube camera. Uh, definitely not too bad. Uh, it can get a little uh, pixelated if, uh, if too much action is happening on screen. Whoa, look at this. Look at all this action that's happening on screen. And it also has some, uh, some hard time with, uh, with darker areas, but I'm sure that could be resolved with a little camera adjustment that could be um, mounted on using the GPI opens or something. It would definitely be uh, much better, I think, because you can see that I'm pretty much the thing that's the least clear uh, <laughs> being recorded right now. Uh, my walls are, are pretty clear. But with that said, I would say that this is a very interesting little device. I would call it uh, a bit of a toy uh, in its current state, but it's something that's fun to play with. You can see what can be done with it. You could try to script something. I mean, you have a full-blown Linux operating system at your disposal. So it could be really, really cool to experiment, see what you could... Uh, automize and uh, maybe you could make like uh, use one of those what is it uh, TensorFlow light things if it runs on the Pi it might be able to run on this uh, and do like object detection and whatever right because you have a camera it doesn't have that much RAM but uh, or processing power for that matter but perhaps it's possible and if it's not possible on the camera itself it is possible to do it server side if anything but the fact that it runs an operating system uh, definitely opens up the um, the potential for for things like that. And so with that said, I hope you enjoyed my first impressions of this camera. I'll uh, definitely see uh, and experiment more with it, see what I can do. And yeah, I think uh, I think I'm going to make more videos in the future about game development. That's what my next video might be about. Uh, and I want to take a look. People have been telling me about uh, this uh, fork of, of uh, Infinitime, which seemed really good, really cool, had some extra features. So I'll take a look at that too. But if you want more Pine64 related content, I do uh, co-host a podcast with uh, my buddy Peter. Uh, Hi, Peter. He, we, we did a episode 10 not too long ago. It was really fun. Uh, it has a really cool intro, and we interviewed Martin Bram. So you can check that out. I'll have a link in the description below. So yeah, with that, um, like I said, I'm, I'm going to be uh, talking more about uh, game development and programming and whatnot, because uh, I'm interested in doing that. I'm interested in talking about that instead of... Uh, I don't know, not doing that, I guess. So I'll see you in the next video, hopefully next week. That's what I've been trying to do. I've been consistent for the last few weeks, and I did it also in the past. So, yeah. <laughs> Goodbye. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Okay. All right. Okay. Bye. <laughs>